Hey fam bam, it's Sienna. Today we're gonna be talking about all the renovations that I've been doing to my house. It's almost finished. I have been working for a really long time on this. It looks completely different to the last house tour that I did, which was all pink and white and girly and fabulous. Now it is jungly and dark and mysterious and sexy. And I'm so excited to show you the progress that I have made. So here we go. The family room. I got a new rug for the family room. Blending in, you're blending in the clean part of the rug. So you guys look at how disgusting the rug gets just from regular foot traffic. And then how beautiful and fluffy it was when it started. Most of it is gray. Okay, so I just vacuumed and Swiffer wet jet, so it's all clean. The new rug is here. <laughs> Tiger loves it. Oh my God, he's moving so fast. What is going on? This rug was only $160, like how crazy. I found it on rugs.com. At the time that I bought the rug, I had not picked the color of the walls yet. I just can't wait to have walls that goes with the rest of the house, you know what I mean? I know, so risky, but <laughs> I just really liked this rug and it worked out perfectly. Then I found a coffee table because the coffee table I had was glass. It looked like it belonged in a palace and it was, it matched the theme. I've had it for two years. I was just over it. Family room really needed something organic to ground it. Everything was too like matchy matchy and I wanted it to be more eclectic. I found the find of the century, this live edge wooden redwood table. You're going to die. I found it for $200 on offer up. Like the guy just needed to get rid of it and needed whatever money I was willing to pay for it. It was literally meant to be mine. I'm obsessed with this table. I feel like I'm never getting rid of this table. It will be passed down to generations <laughs> to come. Like it's that good. And it adds the perfect touch. It really makes the house look like you are in a jungle. The couch needed a revamp too because everything was pink. I just wanted it to have that more mismatchy prints type of a look. So every single pillow I got covered in a different fabric. These were custom made pillowcases that I found off of Etsy and it, oh, it came out mwah, chef's kiss. So good. Absolutely love it. I left the bottom base of the couch pink. If I had it my way though, and I could like reupholster the whole couch in like an emerald green velvet. Oh, that would just be brilliant, but I'm not gonna spend thousands of dollars on it because this pink couch was a custom order and it already spent me thousands. So we're just working with it, girl. We got some pillowcases on it and we're good. I have this fireplace that I got at Big Lots and I wanted to update it. I think I've shown you guys in a prior video, I did add enhancements to the fireplace to make it gold and pretty. And then above the television, I had the crown molding put in. It is foam. It's just hung up there with like sticky tape and a nail. <laughs> so I had this idea to put flowers or plants hanging from above the television. I saw it some house tour on YouTube and I thought, okay, this would look amazing if I did clear acrylic shelves and then glued the flowers onto the acrylic shelves. And that way the LED lights that are attached to the back of my television will shine up through the see-through shelving. So here you can see that I literally just used hot glue. It looks like one big piece, but it's actually two different little shelves. And I fluffed out all of the flowers to make it look like it was connected. Next to the hanging plants above the TV are these two wooden shelves that I found at Ross which really adds an eclectic kind of Moroccan vibe. We did have some issues with the shelvings. When you're doing renovations, there's always gonna be multiple moments of hell as you're changing things out. And the back of these shelves, one of them, the holes were not in the same place as on the other shelf. Oh my God, that was so awful. So we have a problem. We discovered that these shelves are actually not level on the back. So when you hang them up, it's like crooked. So now we're taking them off and re-putting them on. And then on top of them, I have two statues that I found at an antique mall of these little Asian people. And I didn't want them to fall off, so I did put sticky tape underneath of them to help them stay onto the shelving. 
the little statues had felt on the bottom of them, so we had to like rip the felt off. I had to sand it down to try to get this felt off of these porcelain thing. I used my sandpaper little holder thing. I sanded down as much of the fabric off as I could, and then we put a big strip of alien tape on each side, and we're going to just set this lady down on top of the cabinet and hope that it sticks. You see what I'm saying? Just there's always something that you have to work around. Don't get discouraged, keep on going, girl. The top of the fireplace is completely different now as well because I went to a flea market and found tons of chinoiserie, blue and white little figurines, vases. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I found for really inexpensive pricing. I love this look that there's a collection like sitting on top of the fireplace and it looks curated and put together and we organized exactly where everything goes, added some flowers, and it really is giving me all the beautiful like grandma vibes I was searching for. It's a very like grand millennial theme on the fireplace there. Behind the couch, I added a glass shelving that I found on Wayfair. I wanted something really delicate and didn't take up like, too much visual space and you just focus on the things that are on the shelves. Because as I collect stuff, I wanted somewhere that I could have a mix matchy kind of collection area. And certain things there are of sentimental value and don't really go with the decor of the house. So this way, it's like tucked behind the couch. It's not really a focus point but every time I walk past it I have the nostalgia and then to create a sort of hallway I added this runner also from rugs.com which kind of delineates the space a little bit more and gives it like a hallway look which is kind of cute the wall behind the couch I hand painted you guys it took me like four or five hours and one day I was just like I need to do something with this I'm feeling creative so I just got out my acrylic paint and I went to town it looks like vines and leaves it looks like wallpaper like it came out so good if you have a steady hand or a good eye like I highly recommend doing this because wallpaper is so freaking expensive this way you don't have to like cut around all the weird edges and there's a lot of strange like air conditioning vents and doorbell thingy like there's there's a lot of weird stuff on that wall that I didn't want to have to worry about cutting around for wallpaper. So this way I just painted around it. It came out so good. I, I love it. I love it. Then I used my rose wall panels from my old house and put them in the door of the bathroom. I hung them with those little plastic command strips and alien tape because it's a stronger, stickier tape than the command strips themselves. I kept the throne room sign. I just think it looks so cute. This is like Amaze balls, loving it. It really brings in the pink from the throne and also the pink painting that I found. I put right next to it. I found that at Ross. So it kind of is like a full circle moment for the old home, mixing in with the new home and keeping the pink color consistent through the house, but as more of an accent color than the main color. And of course you guys already saw the foyer. So that was handled um, in a prior video. And the kitchen, I did bring the gold all the way up to the white wall that was above the kitchen. It now has gold contact paper on it that matches the backsplash. Now let's talk about the paint, honey, because the paint was a whole fiasco in and of itself. Painted the whole area by the fireplace pink. Okay, loved it, it looked so cute, great. But I just felt like it really wasn't giving me the vibes that I wanted. I wanted dark, cozy, sexy. Baby pink's not gonna give that to you, I'm sorry. It's light, it's bright, it's airy, it's fun, it's cheerful. I'm trying out some new colors for the wall because I just didn't like the other ones. I have that lime, hated it. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that color is absolutely stunning, but I'm like really, really excited about this color. It's just basically a darker version and I'm kind of like drooling over it. So let's see the difference. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh it's so good. Oh, it's definitely gonna need two coats though. It's not as thick as that one is, that's for sure. Then I repainted over it super dark peacock blue, which 
was the most gorgeous, stunning color I've ever seen in my life, obsessed. And then I thought, okay, well, let's not do this super dark color throughout the whole rest of the bedroom area. Let's do like a slightly lighter turquoise color. So I did the whole thing and I realized there was like streaks everywhere. I was like, what the hell is this? Why are there streaks? It looked like shiny almost. I was like, oh, I don't understand why this is happening. And then I decided I didn't even like the turquoise color because it was too bright and light. So I thought, I'm gonna do that dark peacock color everywhere and just paint on top of it. So then I repainted again, sister, oh my God. I was painting for like weeks, it was ridiculous. Girl, tell me why the streaks were still there. I'm going back and forth to the Home Depot like a thousand times. I bought the highest end paint you can get. It's supposed to be primer and color in one. It's like $65 for one gallon. It's supposed to be once and dunce, lady. No, I was doing two coats and it still was leaving streaks. Nobody could help me, nobody knew why that was happening. They said, oh, well why don't you buy them flat mat that's one tier down in quality from this one that you bought. Maybe the flat mat in the lower quality will be more flat. And it was not the same color, you guys. It was not the same color at all. For some reason, like that quality of paint like is not nearly as vibrant as the higher quality paint. So always go with the higher quality paint. So guess what you have to do? I was like researching on YouTube like how to get rid of paint streaks. You have have to sand the wall down, bitch. <gasps> I was dead. Fam bam, I'm here with one of my best friends, Jess. She's helping me because <laughs> this is such a debacle. This painting situation has turned into like such a huge fiasco. Are you gonna show me? I'm gonna, gonna show, show I'm gonna okay. show, I'm gonna show. It looks trashy as hell. It's not the same color. The streaks are even worse. I called Jess crying, just like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. She's like, don't worry, I'm gonna come help you. We're gonna figure it Captain out. Captain save my friend. So <laughs> we covered this entire area, right? Well, not, let's not say we, cause it wasn't me. It wasn't me, it was her. Yeah, <laughs> was you were her. You totally helped. I, I helped lift it, the brushes. It, I helped it, lift the brushes. It wasn't, she, she said, oh, help. No, I didn't. <laughs> it was a two man but, job. But this entire, so this was already pre-painted. Wait, right? let me flip the camera around. Okay. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> I don't wanna step on your rug. So, okay, when I go here, you can really see the streaks. Fucking Look up. at the house. Look at all this shit that everywhere. Well, well, listen, that's not even a part of this. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's not even a part of this. Don't all of this it. was hiding behind my bed as storage. Innovation, okay? <laughs> They're just seeing the process. You guys see the amazing part. Listen, you're behind the scenes now. So. This is behind the you're scenes. You're welcome. Again, streaky as hell. I'm praying oh the second coat is not going to look this bad, but, like, it looks so bad on camera. Look at that. Apparently the only way to get rid of streaks on paint is to sand it down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Tiger. Oh, I stepped on his tail. Oh my God. So of course I go get a sanding thing. So I got my sanding kit and I'm sanding and I don't realize like, oh my God, there's little dust particles of fucking paint all over the place. So I got like dust all over my face, probably in my lungs. Like I'm probably toxic as fuck right now. So I got pieces of paint all over me, <laughs> like little flecks. Ugh, not smart, not smart. Should have worn a mask. So that just got dust all over the whole house and now I'm vacuuming it up. Wow. So that was a mistake. Wear a little respirator thingy or a mask or something if you're gonna be doing this. What saved the day? Flood Floetrol eliminates brush and roller marks and improves flow and leveling. Latex base paint additive. You use like a tiny amount. I had to do the math. We got the right ratio. This helped tremendously. I don't even understand why or how it works. The streaks were significantly less after adding this to the paint. That was the paint story. It was a fiasco, but everything's painted now and it looks absolutely stunning. I switched out my bed as well. I have a new bedspread. I got this from my grandparents. It was actually my grandparents' bedspread, if you can believe it. The other thing I added was above the bed, there's these two little like mirrored shelf thingy majiggies. And I put remote control candles on top of the little shelves. Okay, the bar area, I added my dangling 1960s, 1970s vintage ball lamp behind the television that's in that corner. Also a plant up there hanging from the ceiling. Amazing, like I can't even believe how good it looks. That is kind of exciting moment that I didn't know was gonna happen. I hope you enjoyed guys. I love you so much and I'll see you in my next video really soon. Bye.